Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. We're in our series right now called Where Do We Grow From Here? And this is a unique series because it's about our church as a whole and where we're headed as a church, but also individually where we need to grow spiritually. But as we learned last week, we don't necessarily grow individually because we're connected to the body of Christ as Jesus as the head and we are the body. We are the church together. And so a lot of what you're going to hear for the rest of this series has to do with us together helping one another grow as well. And I want to share with you our next point in this series, and that is that me as an individual and as a church, uh, we are called to live on prayer. We're called to live on prayer, to depend on God in prayer. Before the church elected me as the lead pastor here uh, in 2019, God had really put on my heart to continue the foundation that we, was already laid of prayer here at church and to build on it more and more and to grow in our prayer lives here at the church. And uh, of course, if God's going to do that, guess who he's going to start with? Me. You know, if I'm going to preach about it, I have to practice what I preach. And so God began to burden me as well. And I've, I've always wanted to grow more and more in my prayer life. And so in the past two to three years, I've been on that journey. And man, does God have interesting ways to get people to grow in their prayer life? Like maybe the last two years? God will often take us through seasons that are difficult to create beautiful things and to grow us. Now, we have to embrace them. We have to embrace what God's trying to do. And so I don't know about you, but the past two years have driven me to my knees more than normal. And that's exactly where I'd rather be is in prayer with God. And God will get you there if you don't. <laughs> It's the way he works sometimes. Prayer is one of the most important spiritual disciplines uh, in the Christian's life. And year after year, we hear people say, I want to grow in my, study, in my Bible study, and I want to grow in my prayer life. And then you, I get it, and you know what I mean. By the end of the year, you go, okay, next year I'm going to grow in my prayer life, and I'm going to grow in my Bible study. It's a hard sometimes practice and, and spiritual discipline to be consistent in and follow through. But it is extremely important. We're called to be people of prayer. And this fellowship, this church is being challenged by God to be a church of prayer. And here's the reality. Prayer got us here. And prayer will get us to where we're going next. You know, your mom, your dad, your grandma, grandpa, a church member, a neighbor, someone who's a believer, they prayed you to where you are today, I am sure. They invest a lot of time and prayer into your life. I know I was prayed over many, many times, and I'm so grateful. But we as a church, we have to continue and grow together uh, in our prayer lives and as a church coming together to pray as well. And so one of the things we've been establishing is monthly prayer um, here, and as well as some ministries are getting together. But I want to encourage you, if you're part of a small group, make it a point to spend time in prayer together as we continue this practice. I want to share a story with you that uh, proves that God is real, even though people are going to question that and challenge that in our skeptic world. But this is my testimony. You can't take it away. It's a true testimony. And that prayer works. Amen. Um, I don't question, I don't have faith that God's real. I know God's real. Um, I mean, I do have faith, obviously. It's matured into I know. And... Uh, I, about 2015, we went on a mission trip with a youth ministry, and we were headed to Santiago, Dominican Republic. Some of you may have heard me share this story, but it's very fitting for today, so I'm sharing it again. And I'm on a plane, and um, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm nervous because I don't speak any Spanish, and I'm getting ready to preach and teach and lead a group in, a, in an unknown land I've never been to. We have some interpreters, praise the Lord for them. But I'm, I'm, I'm praying, and I'm, God, help me. But at the same time, I've been reading in my Bible about spiritual gifts at the time. And so this is a very, you know, just peculiar prayer. You know, this has nothing to do with the missus trip inherently at first, but then it is. And I'm just praying, God, show me 
Show me what my spiritual gift is. Help me solidify and clarify what my spiritual giftings are because I want to operate in them. And this is where it connected. I want to operate in them this week. I want, to be, I want to be useful in your hands this week. So I'm praying this prayer, and I'm doing it in my heart, in my head, and I'm not telling anyone. Fast forward about six or seven days. We're there for a week, <clears throat> and I'm preaching to the church on a Sunday morning. They, they gave me the opportunity to preach, which I was very humbled to do, and I felt like the sermon just bombed, like it was bad, you know. And a few people came up to respond to the, to the response moment, the altar time. And then as I'm up on stage just interceding and praying and, and just watching what's happening, this, this frail little grandmother starts walking down towards me. And she goes and talks to my interpreter, and the interpreter comes to me and says, Pastor Ryan, come here. This, this, this grandmother, Abuela, has a, that's how bad my Spanish is. I don't even know if I said that right. Says that she has a message for you from the Lord. So I stepped down the stage because I was up there just praying and just, you know, seeing other people. Other people were already praying for people, so I stayed back and let them do that. <clears throat> and I stepped down on this, off the stage, and I've never met this lady in my entire life. Um, she's trembling, and I've seen people like this before, and I could tell God has given them something to say, and they're afraid because they don't want to be wrong. <laughs> it can be a little humiliating, but she was strong, you could tell, and she stepped out in faith, and she had a word for me. We've never met. She wasn't in the airplane with me, and this is how she leads the prayer, and then after she says this, I had tunnel vision. I almost forgot where I was. It was so powerful. She goes, you've been asking God what your spiritual gift is. Tell me God doesn't exist. And I would have to change everything that happened that week in my life. So she goes on and she says, I, here is your spiritual gift. She, she shares that with me. I, it is accurate. I've been walking in that. Uh, words of knowledge, words of prophecy. And I've been living through that. And, and God's been using me in that way. And, and then she also gives me prophetic words about what's going to happen in the future, which it did happen in 2019. Now, God is real, and he hears your prayers. So pray. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> Did not see that coming. Um, and that's how God will work sometimes, too. He'll surprise you. And I don't know why he answered that one so fast and not other ones, but he did. And I praise the Lord for that. Church, prayer is necessary in the Christian walk. Let's talk about the necessity of prayer. Paul says this in Ephesians 6, 18 through 20, the famous chapter on, on spiritual warfare and the armor of Christ, and he ends the teaching of the armor of Christ on this. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere and then he says this to the church, and pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news, in other words, salvation is for Jews and Gentiles alike, for all people. And he says this, I am in chains, still preaching this message as God's ambassador. So he's arrested and he's actually in, in house arrest, being guarded by roaming soldiers. And he's an ambassador, a messenger of God, and he says, so pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. Uh, let's quickly cover a basic. What is prayer? Prayer is talking to God. Reading the word is often God talking to you. So when you need to an answer, God will speak to you. But when we need to talk to God, we, we just share from our heart. Um, I called my mom this week. I told her some things to pray about. I, I, we chatted about light things. That is prayer to God. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't over-spiritualize it. You could be in the car, and I always say, keep your eyes open. <laughs> you could be anywhere. You can talk to God. The key is, do you talk to him in spirit and in truth? Do you have a relationship with him? Do you speak from your heart, and do you share what's going on in your life? God cares. We don't have to pen and write a scripted prayer that thou with God of the universe is. Lord of all. No, he just, he wants you. He wants, 
He wants your heart. He wants your mind. He wants your attention. And Paul says this in this scripture, pray at all times and on every occasion. We're invited to pray about all things on every occasion, every circumstance, great or small. Now, I don't think that it really concerns God whether we should pray on if pineapple should be in our pizza or not. Because we all know the answer is no. People are leaving the church right now. I am not joining this church. <clears throat> Don't touch my pineapple. I prefer meat and veggies. Just saying. Some people prefer extra cheese. God's not worried about that. We know that. But sometimes there's things that we don't pray about that we should. That may not look like a big deal, but they are. By the way, that's one of the values of praying with people and prayer partners. Because when they come with a prayer request or they pray about something, you're like, oh, man, I haven't started praying about that in my life yet. I need to pray for that. That's a good point. Pray in all circumstances on every occasion. But seriously, here's the thing. I haven't found anywhere in Scripture where, where the question of the power and the necessity of prayer where, where it was ever there. There was no question that prayer is effective or not. People prayed. Followers of Christ, the early church in the book of Acts, they knew how vital it was to pray. Church, we're living in a world. I mean, have you, how's your prayer list? Is it getting bigger or what? But when you follow Jesus, he's going to ask you some things that challenge you. He's going to ask you some things that stretch you. Some things that you got to do that will stretch you to trust in him. You're going to come in contact with people at work or even your home going through things. And the last thing you need to do is, is go to Google and go, what should I do? Sure, there's a lot of answers. But we need God's guidance and answers. We're living in a society where people are going through some severe and serious things and questions and challenges, even we as a church and as Christians, we can't afford not to pray. I won't go through the list of things because I would be saying them all day. Here's the thing. The, the believers, they prayed like it was oxygen. They prayed all the time. They, they couldn't live unless they lived on prayer. Because they were always dependent on God and they knew that their source of strength and provision came from him. Prayer was necessary to Jesus. Jesus had a habit of getting alone and praying to his father. Before Jesus chose his 12 disciples, he prayed. The night Jesus was betrayed, he did a, he did a training on how to defend themselves. No, he held a prayer meeting. Wait, what? what? You're going to be betrayed and you want to go pray? Yeah, and they couldn't stay awake, but he kept praying. He kept trying to wake them up. Jesus is on the cross, and he prays for people and says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Prayer is essential and necessary. Jesus, period, prayed, period, and he's Jesus. We need to pray. We don't have an excuse not to pray. There's just too many things to pray about. And I have a personal conviction. Uh, maybe you can adopt this one as well. Uh, when we don't know what to do, pray. Talking about all occasions, all circumstances, all situations. This is on the screen for you so you can remember it. When we think we know what to do, pray. Pray until you do what God wants you to do. Now, if you don't get any answers from God in your prayer time, it may be because it's in here. And so that's why we also spend time reading this. And I preached on that a couple weeks ago when we were at home for church and not in here. So you can see that sermon on our YouTube channel or our notes online to help you about studying the word of God and applying it to our lives. D.L. Moody wrote a book called Prevailing Prayer. It's one of my favorite books. You can purchase it on Kindle and online. It's pretty cheap. He said this, those who have left the deepest impression on this sin-cursed earth have been men and women of prayer. Those who have left the greatest impact and legacy and difference in this world have been people of prayer, not necessarily action first, but prayer and then action. 
Paul says, be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. I love this. Being persistent and committed to pray for one another as the body of Christ. I like, I like how prayer is like this, um, this repellent of selfishness. Because we're called to pray for and be persistent, as Paul says in the scripture, for other believers. That causes us not to focus on self and think about the needs of others as well. And so it's hard to be selfish when you're busy praying for how many believers are in here? How many believers in your home? How many believers around the world? It's hard to grow selfishly when you are praying selflessly. And so he calls us to pray for one another. And then Paul says, and I love this, Paul goes from your personal things to others, and now the mission of God to reach the world, and he's praying. He said, pray for me that I will speak boldly the gospel that belongs to everyone, Jews and Gentiles, the salvation for all people. Pray that I will declare it even in chains. I love that. Paul didn't say, "Come, hey, come break me out of this, this prison. Hey, come up with a team to come get me out of here. Get some, get some Navy SEALs. Help. I didn't have them yet, but yeah. No, he says, pray that I will be strong where I am pretty much because people need Jesus. His focus wasn't on his momentary troubles, but on the trouble of eternal hell in people's lives. Wow. You give everything you need to give to God. Then you start focusing on other people's prayers. And then you start focusing on eternity. Focus on eternity. People are going to go to hell if they don't know Jesus. And so he's concerned instead of being in chains. Focus on that. Praise the Lord. Now let's get a little bit more personal. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. He says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. We're encouraged to not worry about anything. That's easier said than done at times. But instead of worrying... In every situation, instead of being burdened or concerned, in every situation, go to God in prayer, tell him what you need, and then take an inventory and thank him for all that he's already done. Now, I've preached on this before, but it's a staple scripture on prayer for our church. And I love this because what he's saying here is, is train your mind and your heart to remember on how faithful God is, and he's going to be faithful again. Because when situations get really big and troublesome, it seems like we have a short-term short memory of the power of God in our lives, and we forget all that he's done because this one circumstance is so overwhelming, but we forget that we've been through that, and we've been through that one, and we've been through that one, and we're still standing because God is that good. And, and the result then, if, if we're not praying, the result will be that we live in worry. But if we begin to cast our cares and anxieties on him, he will help us. And then we start to thank him for all he's done and we reinforce that he is a faithful God. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. And his peace will guard your heart and mind, it says right here in the Bible, for all the attacks that are going to come the rest of that day. Because you don't just need peace for a moment, you need lasting peace that will protect your heart and mind for what's going to come that day. Speaking about living a day, Cynthia Lewis, a saint of God, said this, if your day is hemmed in with prayer, it is less likely to, less likely to come unraveled. You're not going to fall apart. You're put together by Christ, by God, in prayer. And don't be afraid to leave those quotes up a little longer for those online and here in the room. Sometimes, I want you to know something. Sometimes, God doesn't answer your prayer the way you would like it to be answered. Sometimes, he doesn't give you the tangible provision 
and resource that you've asked for. Instead, what he gives you is himself. You see, I believe that there are times where God is just wanting you to be in his presence, so he's going to hold off on that one. Oh, I like, I, like, I like that Pastor Ryan's coming to me. Let's go ahead and just keep fellowshipping in prayer, right? I wonder if he does that. I don't have scripture to back that up, but I wonder if he does that practically. But here's what I have noticed. If I follow the formula in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, um, I have so much peace, I'm not even really worried about that provision. I forgot about the worry, and I go on living life with peace and security that God loves me and cares for me because he's fully capable of taking care of my needs. And then the next thing you know it, because I concentrate on that prayer, I see it answered. What I'm saying is, is sometimes he's going to give you peace so that you don't go and make a decision that you regret because you're worried and afraid. And he's like, I'm going to give you peace for now, and I'll take care of that later. I don't, I don't know about you, but I've been in prayer, and I've, gone, I've come to him with my burdens and concerns. I've left feeling joyful and confident that God loves me and he cares for me. He's going to finish what he starts. I've experienced that. What we're doing is we're letting God be God and you not be God. You can't, we learned last week, you can't handle worship. We can't handle being God with our prayer needs. We surrender them, all of our concerns and worries. We thank God for all he's done, and we press on and do what God's called us to do. We don't fall apart in our house or in our homes and our cars and our workplaces and come unraveled. No, we stand strong in the fact that God hears us. He's going to take care of that. Now, let me keep praying for other believers. Let me keep thinking about and focusing on the mission that God has for us. Let me love my neighbor as I would love myself. That's what we do. Ryan, that's easier said than done. I know. I've been through it. I know a little bit about that. And I tell you, the only way I survived was surrendering my concerns and burdens and just focusing. You know what's interesting is when I started focusing on the mission, I all of a sudden didn't have as many problems. What do you know? You want to know why? Because you hang out with someone who has bigger problems than you. Right? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Oh, I have food and water and clothing and air conditioning and heat and a bed. This kid is, is starving all week. What am I complaining about? Man, praise the Lord for some sobering moments like that. All right, so, hey, Ryan, great. I get it. It's necessary. What do I do? I'm glad you asked. Thank you for asking. The discipline and practice of prayer. Here's what we need to do. We need to start prioritizing prayer in our lives. You know what we do, right? We prioritize what matters to us in our lives. We give our heart to anything that matters. Here's what we have to do. It's not necessarily that you prioritize prayer first. You prioritize God. Prioritize God as the most important person to speak with you in your life, to speak to in your life. Okay, last week we talked about we worship God, and then we talked about we grow together, we come together. There's a reason why I started with we worship God, because that begins everything else we do, our relationship with God. If God matters more than anyone else and anything else, we will talk to him first. Amen? And if that means we're praying, you're practicing prayer. And when God is a priority, prayer becomes a priority. Uh, we live in an impatient society. We want to see results. We want to see them fast. Chipotle's taking forever with my food. I'm hungry. We got to be patient. We want microwave answers from a God who wants long obedience. We must be patient. And here's why we must be patient. He wants to be with us. He wants to give us the right answer and the right provision. He wants us to change our hearts and minds towards things in the waiting he cares about us too much to give us what we exactly what we're wanting versus what we actually need. He cares about that because he's a good father that loves us, and I don't give my kids everything they want right away, especially. <laughs> I 
when we don't see results and we're impatient, we can lose faith that God cares. We can lose faith that God even hears our prayers. And you know what that does? It hurts our prayer life. We quit praying. Seen it all the time in mentoring sessions and discipleship. Stay strong. Be persistent in your prayer. God has no shortage in power and love to answer your prayers. We just have a shortage of patience. We have a shortage of endurance. And then it turns into a shortage of faith and a shortage of discipline on our part. And that's why we're doing this message. We need to grow in our prayer lives. We can, it can never hurt to pray more. Amen? <laughs> unfortunately, when we're talking about prioritizing prayer, unfortunately, prayer has been considered or adopted, and it's a poor thought, but it, it's, we got to be honest with ourselves, um, has been considered a waste of time in some people's lives. Most won't say that. They may think it, but too often the way Christians live convicts us. We live like it's a waste of time because we don't stop and pray like we should. And so you don't have to say it. God knows your heart. He knows my heart. And I want to encourage you with something. Do not adopt that thinking. Do not adopt that thinking that it's a waste of time to pray. I assure you, it is not a waste of time to pray. It's quite the opposite. Because when we spend time making wrong decisions, getting no results, we end up where we first started. When we make the wrong decision, it just sets us backwards even more. But when we take the time to pray, it is more fruitful than we realize. In prayer, this is what happens. In prayer, we grow in our trust. We grow in our peace dependency, wisdom, and discernment, which often play important roles in making decisions in certain circumstances. So when we slow down and pray, God gives us wisdom and guidance that makes better decisions. Uh, there was a story that goes, it's been passed around in books many times, and it goes like this, that two men went out to go chop down trees. One spent an hour sharpening his ax, the other one just went right to work, and he got ahead and had more trees chopped down, but the one who took the time to sharpen his ax came out and doubled the amount of trees chopped down. We do that to ourselves when we don't pray. We waste time sometimes not praying. It's the other way around. Taking the time to pray saves us time and pain and wrong choices. Uh, real quick, um, no offense to anyone who's had uh, solar panels, but I remember I shared a sermon about my wife and I praying to God, seeking counsel on getting solar panels. We said no, and I'm glad we didn't. We didn't want that loan every month. I don't want to be in debt to another company. We sought God, we waited, and we made the right choice, and I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I did. Some of you guys may have been wondering why I talked about that. Now you know. I believe that making a prayer for choice is better than saving, quote unquote, time. I'd rather make a prayer for choice that's going to save me pain, confusion, and time. So how do we begin prioritizing prayer? First thing you got to do, you ready? This is, this is spiritual. This is deep. Admit you need God in everything you do, and you'll pray more. Let me explain. Prayer is an attitude and posture of humility. Prayer is a conviction that you are utterly dependent upon God. It's remembering God is our source for everything. And again, prayer lets God be God. Prayer believes that God can accomplish more in a moment than we could in a month. Any important, serious endeavor that we have in our lives without prayer, I would warrant you and, and warn you to say that it's not worth pursuing if you don't pray for it. Prayer says we care about God's will, not just our own. Prayer says I want God involved in my life and I want his blessing in my decisions, amen? If we don't pray, this is what we inadvertently communicate to God, that we don't want him involved. And sometimes we are settling for no help, no favor, and no divine results. That's a hard word to say, but I need to say it because I've experienced that pain in my life. And I would rather you not. <laughs> now, I know that's not our heart. Our heart isn't that we don't want to see any good results and we don't want to 
do what God wants us to do. But again, sometimes our disciplines do not say that. So what can we do then to help that? Here's the next thing. Pause life to get alone with God in prayer. Slowing down and praying, having a dedicated time of prayer is, is extremely important, and it's the model that Christ demonstrated for us. I believe in prayer on the go. I believe when Paul says pray without ceasing is okay, it's biblical, but I believe we're meant to slow down and get with God. And let me give you a couple practical reasons why. When I pray on the go, I often forget what I pray. And when I forget what I pray, I won't notice the prayers answered. But if I slow down and I even journal my prayers and I concentrate on prayers, not only will my prayers be even more effective and more uh, powerful and, and I'll concentrate and pray for more things, but now I remember I prayed those things because I didn't do it in my hurried pace of life. Isn't God worth slowing down and being with? He is. Amen. So what do I do um, daily when I read my word? I'll pray before, I'll pray during my reading, and I'll pray after. I'll read something and go, Lord, help me apply this to my life. Ooh, God, that hurt. Thank you for correcting me. Oh, God, help my, my friends who are going through this. May they be able to live this out. I'll do that as I read. Sometimes it takes me a while to finish a chapter because that's what I'll do is I'll hang out with God. So I want to encourage you to slow down and do that. The next thing is, have some structure. Start with structure. Okay, it's okay. It's okay to have some structure. I'm the kind of guy who likes to live by the Spirit, right? But you know what? Start with structure if you're struggling to get going. And so here's one example that people use. They use the ACTS acronym. Uh, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. Adoration being praising God and giving Him glory and, and lifting His name higher and magnifying who He is in your life and and uh, just remembering he's faithful. And then you may confess things about your life and, and talk to him about your own needs. Uh, thanksgiving is giving him praise. And, and again, like we're applying uh, Philippians 4.6 uh, to remember all that he's done for you. And then lastly is, is supplication. And that's going to him for your needs and really for other people's needs as well. Asking for his supply of help and resources in your life. Now, I personally don't use that one. There's also another one called tacos. Not really trying to think about tacos when I pray. Um, but that one is uh, Thanksgiving, adoration, confession, others, supplication. So if you like tacos, go for it. Here's one that I use, and you can make this a perfect circle if you want. Um, it's the best way of looking at it. And this is a, an example of what I do to help me stay structured. When things are getting a little crazy and I need to slow down and recalibrate my prayer life, I use this to help me do this. And so it's really supposed to be like a bullseye in your life to target your prayer. So check this out. We made it a little different just to fit the words in. But the first person that I talk to is God. And I praise him and I thank him and I give him all the glory. I focus in on him. And then you might be surprised, like, well, wait, Ryan, you're making it about you by putting you f next. Well, here's how I reason with that. And there's nothing, you can do whatever you want. You can, you can pray in any, any direction you want. I prefer to focus on God first because it helps me see everything else properly, okay? The reason why I address myself next is because the scripture says, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So I want to make sure I'm in righteous standing with God. And then I want to be humble about myself before, before I start praying for other things. I want God to search me and know my heart. And by the way, the health of my relationship affects all the other circles. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not thinking selfishly. I'm thinking actually humbly. Lord, I'm seeking you for my concerns, my needs, even my weaknesses, confessing any kind of sins and bringing them to him. And then I begin to intercede for my family, my kids, my relatives, anyone in my family, cousins and all those things. And then I begin to pray for you as a church. And I pray for the local churches, the global churches around the world. Then I intercede for the community. And then I intercede and go further in prayer life for the world. That is where my prayers go in that direction. 
whenever I need to recalibrate or just practice prayer. So I thought I would show that to you to help you. But again, let the Spirit of God lead you when you pray. Something may press on you in, for the church or community or world, and you start there, or you go there second. I love going with God first because when I remember how big and awesome God is, all the other struggles seem to get a little easier to pray about. All right? And lastly, and we're going to pray together, actually, before we close today. Lastly is uh, we need to pray with one another. The church, they prayed together. The church was powerful when they prayed together in the early church. I am edified and built up when I hear your prayers. Again, I, I wouldn't have thought to pray that. Thank you for praying that, brother or sister. Some of you pray so simple, powerful prayers that mean so much to God and they mean a lot to us. So I wanna encourage you to do something. I wanna encourage you to find a prayer partner other than your spouse. Okay, so men, find another a man of God to pray with. Women, find another woman of God to pray with. And I wanna encourage you, if we're gonna start practicing being a church that lives on prayer, to find a prayer partner that would pray for you. I pray, um, I have many uh, prayer partners and people who pray for me. And um, I wanted you to be aware, just in case you're wondering, who's this guy that's always down here praying for me? I asked Kevin to be my armor bearer on Sundays against spiritual warfare and for spiritual warfare. And so he intercedes for me during the week and intercedes uh, down here for me as well. And so that's why he's here to protect and to pray over us and to pray over me um, because I've been attacked sitting right down there by the enemy. Doubts, fears, anxiety, all that stuff, just so you know. And so I've asked him to pray. I need you to pray because the devil doesn't want me to say any of this that I'm saying today. And he certainly doesn't want you to pray. He wants you to be so busy you never slow down and hang out with God. <clears throat> this is warfare, church. Prayer is a weapon in Ephesians 6. So that's the reason why he's there. But my mom and dad, my friends, my family, other pastors, I had two pastors reach out to me in two different states randomly this week saying, I'm praying for you, brother. We need that. We are not in this alone. We need to pray together. Why don't we stand and close our service with prayer? We're going to do some intercession and prayer using our circles. It's always a good time to pray. Why don't you prepare your hearts? Begin to start with God. Begin to focus your prayers on God. When I get to the personal part, me, I'm not going to publicly say things. But when you get to that part, begin to confess things. This is a personal time. And then we'll go in from there. Thank you, God. God, we're making this a place of prayer right now. God, we're practicing prayer right now. We're coming to you, God, because we need you. God, we're coming to you because we are nothing without you. We magnify you over everything in our lives. We lift your name today. We say, God, Jehovah, Lord of heaven and earth, God, the maker of heaven and earth. What a privilege it is to be a speck on this little planet in the midst of a galaxy that belongs in a universe with millions of galaxies, and yet you see us today. And you hear our prayers from heaven and in our hearts through your spirit. We come to a holy God. We come to a perfect God. We come to a God worthy of all praise. There is no other God but you. God, I thank you and we thank you for all that you've done for us. You are faithful and you'll be faithful again. We worship you, God. 
Lord, you see our own burdens, our own concerns. Lord, you see personally in my life, God. Lord, you see those things that we're bringing to you today, those requests, Lord God. God, I ask for humility, Lord, once again. I ask God for a relationship with you where I can hear and be tuned into you so keenly. Lord, give, a, give me and give us clarity, Lord God, to hear from you, Lord. I ask for more of your Holy Spirit to guide and lead me. Oh, Lord, I need to trust you in all things. God, I ask that you would strengthen my prayer life with you, my conversations. My priority is you. You're my priority, God. Begin to alter that in, in my life and in my church's life, Lord, my family here. God, we lift up our families to you. Oh, Lord, you see the things that we're going through. You see the blessings. You are the blesser of all good things. And we thank you for that. Lord, I lift up my kids. I lift up my wife. I lift up my cousins, my, my nephews and my nieces. Thank you for loving them. God, I pray you would save those who need to be saved. That you would draw them to you, God. And Lord, let our family be a blessing to our community and our church. Let our families serve you, God no one else Lord I lift up our church our brothers and sisters in Christ God strengthen us in the time we live in the end that's coming soon God strengthen us help us to be about your business God like your son was help us to be about your mission Lord, you see the things that we're going through as, as families in this church and the struggles that we face, God. Lord, help us to be so full of you, Lord, that we can even focus on the task and the mission you've given us, Lord. God, heal marriages, heal families, save those who are far from you, God. Lord, help us in our quality time with our families, Lord. God, may we put other things aside to be with our kids, to show them the way. Lord, forgive us for, for not being Christ in our homes like we should. Lord, help us to walk out like Christ in this world. And may we be families that leave an impression, a lasting, eternal impression on our community, God. We lift up our community to you, God. We think about our neighbors, our coworkers, our schools. God, move mightily through our children as they're there at school. Move through us at work. May your spirit just flow from this moment today and our prayer time with you throughout the week. May it flow into every place we go, every circle we come in contact with, God. God, we want Jesus in our community. Lord, draw our community back to you, Lord. Help, us, help them, Lord, to see the truth of Christ. Take off the blinders that the devil has put over them, Lord. God, may we be a light in our community as a church. Thank you, God, for this church who cares about the community. Thank you for our benevolence ministry. Lord, our G-Team Kids program on Saturdays, Lord, and, and Kenneth Ellis and them who worked that, his whole family. Thank you for them, God. Lord, for all those who give and, and buy groceries and give gas and serve those in our community, Lord, bless them richly, Lord God. Lord, bless our businesses. Lord, bless, Lord God, the people that we work with, Lord. Lord, may it be prosperous, Lord, because of your works, Lord God, not ours. Lord, may we be able to be a blessing because of that prosperity, Lord Jesus. May we be generous to love and, and to care for our community who's hurting right now and who needs supply and resources, and most of all, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God, we lift up this world to you and our nation. 
God, help our nation to return to you or to come to you for the first time. May they see a church on fire for you and want to know what is going on there. A believer on fire for you. Lord, forgive our nation for worshiping the almighty dollar instead of the almighty God. Forgive our nation for the corruption and the lies and the deception and the confusion, Lord God. For the lack of love for one another, Lord. The lack of unity, Lord God. Forgive our nation for that, Lord. And may we as a church walk as an example of Jesus Christ in our community, in our church, our world, Lord, in this nation. Guide our leaders, Lord God. As we think about the crisis and the and the, the, the crisis that's building up right now in Ukraine and in Russia. Lord, give them discernment and guidance, God. Lord, humble both powers. Lord, humble the NATO uh, alliance, Lord. Humble us all to remember that life is at stake here. To choose the way of peace and diplomacy, Lord. God, we also trust you, though, because in the end, there will be terrible things that come. So, Lord, we brace ourselves in prayer because of these matters. And the coming fulfilled prophecy of your return and the things that must be done beforehand, God. Lord, we do ask for you to come quickly. We cry out, Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus, come. But we also cry out mercy for the lost. You relent in your return because you wish that none should perish but have everlasting life. We understand this, God. So we walk in the middle of that, praying for both. Lord, hear our prayers today. There's so many needs in our world, the hunger, the struggle, the storms, and the the victims of storms, and Lord, in nature that's affecting things, Lord God, our economy, Lord, in our world, all those things that we cannot trust in, we must trust in you and stand on you. In the midst of crises, God, we look to you. And Lord, help us to trust you as we go our separate ways today. Help us to grow in our prayer lives, Lord. Help us to practice this prayer on a daily basis because we want to be with you because you're a priority in our lives. God, we commit ourselves to be a praying church, the body of Christ, the church, wherever we are. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers today and answering them in due time. And we pray persist and persevere and endure in our prayers. Thank you, God, that we can go here with peace, knowing that you are God and you're in charge. And you're the great supplier of all of our needs. And God, you are drawing the lost children, the wanderers back to you. We can trust you, God, to do that. We love you. I love you. Thank you for this church. I thank you, God, for this moment and what's going to be accomplished through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give God glory and praise. We praise you, God. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, church, go in peace. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Enjoy your time today.